Well, hello, YouTube buds. I hope you're doing well. Colored pencil has to be matted. So the frame always has to be bigger than the artwork. Um, and then I, I found out the standard sizes for what are pre-sold as pre-cut mats. Like if you need an eight by 10, what is the frame for that? The wider measure frame. Um, nine by 12 is the other size I do. What's the frame for that after the mat opening of a nine by 12? Like what mat is pre-cut to the exact right size? And then make my decisions based on the common availability of these pre-cut mats. Smart, right? I can be smart. So you will recognize this painting, colored pencil painting. I should have been able to fit him actually, or them, the monk guys in this portfolio. But the reason is I don't like to have like no edges left on my artwork. And this fits exactly 11 by 14 and no greater. So it's not gonna ex fit my existing art. And um, in there, unless I cut it right to the edge, decaf. I was tempted to make another caffeine coffee. And then I thought, no, George, you're already too jittery. Do not have any more caffeine. I can only handle so much caffeine. I like chatting in the comments. Everybody does, you know, it reminds us that we're, we exist, you know, otherwise the views remind us too. It's like, ah, but if you left a comment, it means, oh, I really, really exist now. Yeah. I know it's sad. My life is sad. Let's take this one out to talk about it a bit more since I did not yet show the finished version. These are two uh, Shih Tzu is the way you pronounce it, which I always try to giggle after I say it. Uh, my sister's two dogs. They look very similar to the dogs, except this one I made slightly uh, kind of youngish looking uh, compared to the original there are some pink areas color called flesh i'll put some of the colors in the description of the video also clarified this area where there wasn't a line as much here in the reference photo but even i was getting so lost as i was adding the colors to the, my drawing in this area and i kept Make, making this lower at times and it's like, like like where the heck is it so i decided just to make that more defined kind of gave this continuous line here that i created like more interest in terms of artwork so it is important if you see something that maybe you can go off the reference photo and do what i call as loose photo realism and make some minor improvements i chose to show some of those micro shadows in the folds and fur sticking out of the white fur with not just the orange but with this purple type color. You can add a lot of depth and interest to your picture. I did have to do a lot of individual hairs more than I would normally versus shapes of hairs because drawing every hair would be impossible and you don't have to copy each hair exactly as the photo but in doing this one thing I found very helpful was to change colors as you get this part into the hair or you or go this much but then erase or use white on some of it and change color for the second half and then the tip of the hair is a different color so in some of the hairs here it, it, it ends in pink but take a look and see how colors have changed this dog was much more experimental. Here I was using blue instead of black in the darkest areas for this dog. And then the blue was too blue, but I wanted like a blue black. So I start with blue and then I add black second. And it makes for a nice dark brown. And so instead of sticking with just, I guess one eye would see that area and say, okay, I see just a very, very dark brown. It's fine to use a color like blue. In a dog. One of my favorite colors is olive green yellowish and it can make for a good medium tone color. So instead of gray I thought well maybe I can get away with that olive green yellowish as my gray color because too much gray in a dog will also just make the dog look old. The gray looked green to me. I, I looked at the photo and I'm like I'm seeing green anyway. Here it's used as a dark color. This is the same green. 
just a heavier application of it. You'll see it in some other places. It looked really good next to the blue as a transition color from dark dark to where there were some mediums and then the lights. I did see some purple as I was looking at the reference photo. So if you see color, it's good just to go for it. And I was seeing the purple not in the dark areas, but in the lighter areas. I thought, well, this is weird. So a purple in this, my set is called mauve with a lot of white added to it. You get this purple streaking here. I'm having a problem with my graphite pencil fading as I move to the coloring and it fades in terms of adding the colored pencil and it gets so faded I kind of sometimes lose myself and I ended up making the original jaw a little further over this way and then I realized later I was looking side by side with the photo on my computer my drawing next to it and I'm I already suspected something was off I'm like oh there it is I had moved it over too far I could show it here and now you can see that it's more becomes more vertical here than I had it originally. If you find you've made an, I guess you could call that an error that you want to correct at that point, it's fine to try and correct it. Some people say you cannot correct once you've got the colored pencil down. It depends how dark it is, depends what color you used. Yeah, there's hair overlapping throughout the dog, but where can I show it in at least a couple places, two or three? You could see these hard lines here in the reference and so I kind of exaggerated him a little bit here because that added a lot of interest to showing the shape of his head by making sure that was a very dark line here and capturing the look of the the, the way the fur twirled around his eyes on both ends was very important to me then here's a shadow so bright white keep it white don't touch it and then it's like I knew I wanted the shadow here. You can use any number of colors. I could have used just a more of a brown. I decided to stay with that tan look. Just have it more concentrated there. I'm happy the way they both turned out. And like I said, that's going to be um, a gift I'm sending off. I don't want to bore you to death. I am confident the camera's working. It's the mic sound that's always a stress. Let's see. Let's find out. Like now, I will find out. Not now. Ten minutes from now, I'll find out. No, after I end this, it'll be about approximately four minutes for me to find out that the sound has worked. I can do it in two, though, probably. I think two minutes will be enough. So if you would stop talking, I can find out in approximately two minutes at the point in which I stop talking that the sound is actually being recorded. All right? You got to let me go here. Okay, bye.